Look, the, uh, the questions about the power play are going to be different today, <laughs> obviously, but uh, I mean, it looked like more shots through, maybe quicker quicker passes, a couple one-timers even. Was that the, was that the formula? Um, there is no, there was no magic wand. We didn't come in and reinvent the, the wheel. We, we practiced it. We adjusted maybe two little things. Um, I thought, again, my comments today after rewatching it, we outworked a penalty kill. It doesn't happen very often. Usually the power play gets a little bit lazy at times and um, penalty kill just has to blow things up. The power play has to maintain possession. So odds are the penalty kills, um, you know, they don't have to be as polished. But I, I thought last night we did a good job of getting to secondary pucks in and around the net. Now that can only happen when you take the first shot. Uh, but we're, um, you know, with all the, the question marks around the power play, you begin to look at a lot of the stats and we're at the middle of the pack as far as uh, uh, shots on goal per power play um, in the league. And, you know, it's when you're not scoring, you have fans, media, players, coaches, they're all yelling at the guy with the puck to shoot. Well. That doesn't make any sense if you don't have a shooting lane, too. So uh, we have to understand that um, they want to shoot, they want to score, but they, they they take what's given, and maybe we can do a little better job of that as well. Hi, right, Matty. Sorry. Uh, last night you talked about seeing more assertiveness in Griffin Reinhardt's game. He said a couple weeks ago that assertive was the word he wanted to use to become a full-time NHL player. That doesn't always mean being physical. I know he's a big defenseman. Yeah. Stepping up and making plays, having confidence in your abilities. Yeah. Uh, <coughs> pardon me, assertive and physical are, uh, are different things, in, in my opinion. Um, assertive can lead to physicality, but assertive is reading plays and getting close to them, closing quickly, um, uh, being aggressive in, in um, being part of the play, um, challenging yourself to make... Um, quick reads, that type of stuff. That's assertiveness, not just backing in and, and taking it, uh, but be aggressive and go get it. Um, so there's a big difference there between physicality. Now, you know, we would like him to be physical too. He's a big, big man, strong. So um, both of those adjectives he needs to work on. When you talk about go out and go get it, it is there any hesitation that associated with what you talked about last night, which was that he didn't he didn't want to make mistakes because he had people behind him and he didn't know if he was going to be in every night. And now that he's more comfortable, he can have that confidence to go out and take I it. I think that's uh, a valid explanation. I, I really do. But also, if you're going to play in the NHL, you're going to make mistakes. And you have to recover from them quickly. That's uh, part of maturing and, and um, you know, being able to put it behind you and get out and go. And uh, the mistake is going to lead to some uh, direction, some instruction. Um, you have to do that. Um, the right way and you have to accept it the right way. I'm not just talking about Griffin, but anybody you have to accept it the right way. And then you got to go out and apply it again. And if you make the mistake again, we'll help you again. Um, I don't ever expect our teams to play mistake free. Uh, it's impossible. But uh, as long as the mistake is effort based and, and um, uh, team based and system based, uh, we can live with that. When you choose not to do it, um, you know the right thing to do, but you choose not to. That's when we have a, a problem or an issue. You've coached in the U.S. Uh, as a non-traditional market, and, and now in Canada. What's the difference, or are there any differences in terms of challenges in, in dealing in with the in the markets or in the like with the fans or yeah, the team in the market and sort of having to deal in the distractions. And um. And that sort of thing. Well. You know, Drew would probably understand this too. Like San Jose, outside of San Jose, it's viewed as a, as a non-traditional market, which it, it began that way. Um, in San Jose, it's a rabbit market. It's uh, it's a smaller city um, in a in a large metropolitan area, but within just the San Jose community, it is it's tight, it's passionate, uh, it's very much like Edmonton. Um, <coughs> I think the um, the fan down there isn't as um, well studied on the game. They enjoy the game. They, they like the action and the physicality and the <coughs> speed. I think here they're able to break, uh, they being the fans, are able to break the game down a little bit and identify maybe what's going wrong or right. Um, that would be a big, big difference. Um, would it be easier for a team to like, pull out of a slump? 
there where you don't have, or, in, or you know, a lot of U.S. markets where you, you're not having to ask, be asked about it every day? Or, or um, I don't think so because what, what we're doing right now, we do every day down there. Uh, may not be as um, as magnified. Um, you know, there's not a lot of Bob Stoffer shows for six hours a day um, in 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 San Jose. But um, you know, there's there's still the recognition. There's a rabid following of fans. There's uh, you know, there are the blogs. There's the writers. There's there's pressure to perform, and uh, the biggest pressure should come from within the locker room. Um, externally, you feel it a little bit, but they, the pressure should come from the internal, you know, inside the inside the locker room. And I think that can be said for all 30 teams in the league, regardless of where you play. Uh, <coughs> Brendan Morrow was hired today. Do you have any memories? Uh, Brendan Morrow, I go all the way back to. I remember Brendan Morrow's from Carlisle, Saskatchewan. I remember watching him in. I think it was Labrette. Um, at an under uh, Saskatchewan development camp, under 15 or whatever. So I can remember him all the way back then. Portland ended up drafting him and he had a great junior career, went on and had a great pro career. Um, I thought he was a, a tremendous player in, in, in different ways. He could score early, he could grind it out, um, became a checker near the end. Had a hell of a career. Not the greatest skater, but he played a long time. Yeah. Played a long, long time. Wanted to ask about uh, Iro uh, Yeah. How, how do you see his uh, development so far and his role on the team? Because he doesn't score much, but he's playing with uh, some high-scoring guys. Yeah, and and if Iro scores, it's a bonus for our team and for him. Um, I like his tenacity. I think that when he shows up, he's got a uh, a mindset of going hard and getting the job done. There's nothing that comes easy for him, and there's no. Uh, softness in our game, in his game. He plays hard, he's strong on loose pucks, very responsible defensively, uh, become a very good penalty killer for us. I think his development has come a long way this year. And you have to remember that he started the season with a new coaching staff injured, basically. He came into camp and had a shoulder injury and none of us really knew anything about him. So to catch the organization's eyes, the manager, the coaches, um, he did something well in Bakersfield, and it's just continued on here. I think we're fortunate to have them.